Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell of I'm Just Sharing. I'm here on our fantastic hot blog tips Google Hangout with Cheryl Locke of Fuzzy Wuzzy Anna Pals and Brian Hawkins of Hot Blog Tips, the originator of this thing. Uh, we got an interesting topic today, and I'm doing a little preamble to let you know exactly where this is coming from. On October 15th, it was Blog Action Day, and basically about 3,000 to 3,500 bloggers from around the world all wrote on the exact same topic. And it didn't matter what their blogs were about on that day, they basically wrote on a topic for the world or their area of the world or whatever. So that leads to our topic today, which is going off topic, is it okay or is it a death knell, or do you see it that way? So the first question, which I'm going to lead off with Miss Cheryl, is have you ever gone off topic? on any of your blogs? And if so, no. why? No. And that was easy, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say no. I mean, Hot Blog Tips is about blogging. We deal with social media and all that. And as far as I'm concerned, it's all related. You know, it's blogging business. But I've, I've had other blogs where I've stepped away from it for a minute. You know, it's just... Uh, Sometimes you just you have something to say and you just it doesn't fit in, but sometimes you just have to say it. So yeah, I have a that's times. that's why I have the forum. Anything off topic, I post over there. That's right. Yeah. There's always somewhere else to post it. Yeah, or or social media stuff, but there's always we'll get into that in a little bit on the uh, on uh, one of the next questions. But there's a slight danger to that. And obviously. Well, with I'm just sharing, which basically is about anything I want it to be about, there is no such thing as off topic. But before I had I'm just sharing, I had my business blog, you know, uh, which is called Mitch's blog. And even though it was about business topics, every once in a while there was something that hit me, and I went off topic. And you know, that's just how I felt that I would do it because, like Brian said, every once in a while I think that there's something that comes up that either irks you enough to want to say it or makes you happy enough that you want to say it. So, so then we'll go into the next one. Actually, before we do that, Cheryl, tell us more about your forum because I don't think I really knew much about your forum. It's a forum. <laughs> uh, no, no. Let, let me help her out a bit. It's, it's, yeah, please help us out with this. The Internet Marketers Guild. It's, it's got some real quality people, and there's a wealth of information. It's been around for years. Just do follow. And... Uh, Anybody that's interested, we're going we're gonna to place a link on our uh, Google Plus page later on today that's going to give a coupon code that can get you into the paid service or the paid uh, membership for free. So be on the lookout for that in a little bit. We'll put a link on uh, below this video too. Okay. So this, the, that is basically about anything you want it to be. We have, that's where, I mean, we have the blog co-op where you can list your newest blog post to write a little description link to it. You have the the area that's the, like a lounge. So anything off topic that I want to post about that doesn't fit any of my blogs, I take over, write a post, and put it in the lounge over there so that I'm not putting it on my blog, but it's still out there for me to share. Is this a private lounge or can anyone join, a uh, uh, forum or can anyone join? We have a paywall, and why we have a paywall is so that we don't have the million spammers. Right now we have over 2,000 posts on it, and none of them are spam because I delete faster than anything, and so we have the paywall to keep people out unless they're invited. Okay, what's a paywall? <laughs> you have to pay to be able to post unless okay. I give you a coupon code because that way we can keep the garbage out. Now, just asking, is that something you want to pop a link up to for people to take a look at, or is that by invitation only? Uh, we actually, Brian and I have worked out a thing just earlier today about inviting the followers of Hot Blog Tips with a coupon code to get in. Okay. So that's why I think, you know, when he brought that up, we talked about that earlier today, and we're going to have a coupon code for them so they can get in. And if other people use it and want to spam, I'll just delete them. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Well, then, on to the next question, which is, 
uh, what do you think when you go to a blog that you visit often for a certain topic and one day there's a post up there that's not on that topic? In other words, does it make you run? Do you get upset? Or do you just take it in stride? Or do you just say, I'm not going to read it for that day? Uh, Brian. I guess it depends on the post. I mean, the, the blog, you know. I mean, if it's a blog on, you know, a real close niche, you know, and then they go off on to something really far out there, you know, you have to wonder, you know, what are they doing? But it's their, it's their blog, you know. I mean, if it's something that I'm that I read on a regular basis and somebody wants to go off topic sometimes it's like a nice change of pace other times it's like well I really can't relate with that I guess I'll move on and come back later you know I it's kinda like a judgment call but I don't really think bad about it you know I mean it's just you know it's their blog whatever they want I, I mean if you have a personal blog and you know everything's fair game you know so I, as far as SEO and traffic and that um, you know, it's. I guess there might be some disadvantages with that, but as far as the uh, you know, the topics and the and and you know, if they can draw in some conversation, a little interaction, it's all good. Cheryl, it, it depends. If it's a niche blog, and I probably don't even go to it if it's something I look at the title. If the title doesn't seem to fit in with what I expect from there, I'm probably not even going. With that said, now, say I go to SEO Moz a lot. If they have a post up that they adopted a new office cat where that has nothing to do with SEO, yeah, I'm going to go because I want to see the damn cat. But if they write, we all loaded up and had a company dinner at Salty's, I'm probably not going to go. So I look at the title. I don't just go to a blog to go to a blog. I... I see a title and I go for that information. So chances are I'd never know if somebody went off topic because or what it was about because I wouldn't go. Now I'm glad you said that because that's actually me. I I have blogs that are categorized. Like I said, I follow over about 250. Time to weed that down again, I think. But I follow a bunch of blogs, but really it is all about the topic. And if the topic is compelling, um, I mean, there's a lot of people who write some very compelling stories and some who write some funny stories, even if most of the time they're writing about something else. And if the title gets me, I go. And I just think that's a fascinating thing. So, uh, yep. My God, Cheryl and I are agreeing. Stop the presses. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure it won't last forever. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's find out what the next question, which is... <laughs> Cheryl, you're going to lead. How do you feel about controversial posts, uh, either within the niche or outside of the niche? Oh, and I have my answers written out. <laughs> okay. I look at it this way. Almost every post you write can be controversial. There is no way around that. No matter what you say, there is someone that can come and either argue with you or read into. You may not even be saying what these people come looking for and read into to your post and go off and call it controversial. So if it's your personal site and you're posting something controversial, that's great and fine. If it's a business site, then you're looking at a whole new ball game simply because whatever you post is going to reflect on you, be it your business or your personality, you know, your personal self. So, I don't care if you want to write something controversial. In fact, people have written controversial things before, and I don't even see the controversy. Other times, you go to a blog and you think, why are people calling this, you know, somebody's rant or something controversial because I'm not seeing it? So, you know, sometimes you can get great information because if it's an actual debate and the, the person that wrote the post and owns the site is willing to debate, and people bring in facts, you can get a boatload of information from following other people's ideas or how other people see it. If it's just a controversial post where it's a one-sided thing, the owner of the blog is stone set in his ways or her ways and they're not going to debate rationally or the commenters aren't going to add to the conversation, then I, I don't see a point in it. 
Good stuff. Now, before I have Brian give his point, I want to uh, mention something that I read yesterday that actually <laughs> highlights what you just said. This woman writes a blog post on getting publicity for your writing. And so she wrote a blog post about that, and she used something that Ann Coulter said during the last uh, Obama-Romney debate. And basically her point was that um, there may be ways that people can stimulate conversation about themselves and, and you know, enhance themselves by doing certain things, even though she didn't like the way that uh, Ann Coulter did it. But, you know, she only mentioned it Ann Coulter a couple of times based on what she did. Well, the next thing you know, the comments on the blog were either pro Coulter or anti Coulter, and it went way off topic. And right. in my opinion, this is a woman, she, she wrote this thing with a, a good intention, but she used the wrong example at a time where you're getting close to an election, and it just went way off. And, and seeing how she was trying to respond back to comments, she wasn't ready for it at all. And, and the thing is, I, People are going to, they weren't looking at her whole picture. They took, and this happens all the time, they took one little thing and probably if she hadn't mentioned Ann Coulter, she had just left it as a quote from somebody, everybody would have said, oh, that's so nice. But as soon as they see that name, they're going to form an opinion. And that happens with a lot of things. I mean, no matter what you write, somebody's going to, find something if they're looking for it. Whereas I could have went there and read the whole thing. Ann Coulter probably wouldn't, the name wouldn't have faced me a bit and I would have got the gist of the whole article. But if you're going and you're looking for something to start about, you'll find it. Yes. And, and that's the point about people need to read posts rather than go look for one line. Guy did that on one of my posts. He, he responded to something because he saw one line. I said, did you even read the rest of it to see what the article was about? And he had to own up. No, he hadn't. And then thinking, wait, you know, so I wrote 600 words for you to find one word so that you could comment on? Uh, that's not even fair. Brian, yeah. do I need to repeat, uh, repeat the question for you? <laughs> you got it. No, I got it. And okay. uh, <laughs> before, I, uh, before I go, I just want to before you go, I mean, before are I, you leaving? Because Mitch and I aren't letting you talk. Well, I just, I just noticed something because I do this multitasking thing so well. I, I, I just saw, it, and it's just a coincidence. But a couple seconds ago, or a couple minutes ago, Chris Perillo put on there. Mom always told me if you don't have anything nice to say, be sure to put it in the comment thread. <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking about some timing. Chris is right on board with us here. So, um, yeah, I mean, for those that know me on a personal level or from not from my recent past know that I've always been big on controversial uh, topics, you know. Uh, on what kind of topics? Controversial. There <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, That's when it affects the whole universe. There it is. But, yeah, controversy is always, uh, is it can be very fun. I've had... A couple of personal blogs. Uh, that's right. I said it, and I'm sick of which are both down now. And <clears throat> it could get into some pretty controversial subjects there. And, and if you can get some interaction going, and it usually almost always turns into an argument at some point, <laughs> which is kind of what that's all about. I mean, you're trying to make a point. In as passionate as you are on the topic, let's take politics for example. If, if you have a political blog and you post about politics, then you're going to, you know, fall right into your niche. But if, if you have a blog like I have on Hot Blog Tips and I start posting who I want to vote for, that's a little inappropriate for one thing. That's not what the readers are subscribed to and that's not what they're coming to see. But also, you have to keep in mind, depending on the topic, you're probably alienating 50% of your readers. Or more than that, really, because since we're international and most countries could really give a, you know, flying leap on who's, well, I guess some of them might, but you know what I'm saying, they're not going to vote because they're not an American. So, you know, it's just, you have to be careful, you have to be cautious, and I, uh, I kind of got away from it. I, I just, I, it was affecting it, you know, I got away from it on Facebook, you know, I, I stayed 
state of business right now as, as much as I can, although I'm, I, I might break down on Tuesday and send everybody a copy on who I voted for. I'm kind of debating that. I, I, <laughs> I voted early. I've already voted, but I actually have a copy of my ballot that I got. Uh, really? Yeah, I copied it before I mailed it off. So I was thinking about scanning that and, and uploading it just to let everybody know who I voted for. But I'm, I'm, you know, it's a little. I have to consider it. A little bit. Well, I, I will guarantee you right now, Brian. Either Mitch or I will come at you when you do it. <laughs> One of us will come at you. You two are the least of my worries. Oh, okay. <laughs> you two are way, way, way far away. I worry about the local bloggers. I can't, I can't get the local people to read. <laughs> I, I'm a big favorite everywhere else, but in town, nobody knows me. No one cares. <laughs> and that's another topic one day. There you go. So then, well, let's go on to the next question. Because uh, I pretty much, I think I answered that one in talking to Cheryl. Um, actually, no, I didn't. I didn't. But I'm going to throw this up. This is very interesting, at least to me. I have found the most contro controversial posts that I've written are when I write about parenting, so to speak, and not necessarily parenting, but things that I see kids doing or whatever, and my thing usually comes back to, well, you know, come on, parents, you got to check some of these things out. I mean, I have commented on seeing what young girls and, you know, 13 to 15-year-olds are wearing with their parents and stuff, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, you know, it's, it's inappropriate. How do you not see that's inappropriate? And I have people who are parents who will write on the blog saying, well, you don't know what it's like being a parent. I'm like, what? I'm sorry. You're supposed to be the adult. You're supposed to be a parent. You're not supposed to be a friend. You know when your child is wearing something that's inappropriate. Uh, come on. But that's when I usually get the most controversy. Um, when I wrote something in general about religion, almost nothing. I wrote anything about, about politics, nothing. But you write about <laughs> parenting, and they get mad. Uh, I will tell you this. When it comes to controversial posts, if you want a lot of interaction, you want a lot of downright mean, and you better be able to back up what you're saying because they will rip you to pieces, say something that affects women. They will rip you apart, and if you're a guy doing it, as far as I'm concerned, you know, when some guy tells me, oh, having a baby ain't that bad. Why is my wife complaining when she's pregnant? Let me tell you what. I'll rip your head off, and that'll be the first part that you miss, and sooner or later you'll miss other pieces of your body. <laughs> but, yeah, you want to get somebody going? Speak from not having experience and go after something that's particular to women. But just be prepared because they will hunt you down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all I remember, obviously, I've, I don't have any kids. I've never had to go through that experience. But being a healthcare consultant, I remember going into OB one time for a meeting and hearing some woman in some room screaming, Oh my God! Oh my God, this is terrible. Get this out of me. And then he came the cussing and whatever. And my eyes got really wide, and the nurses pushed me into a different room. <laughs> and I said, Well, that, that was fun. <laughs> and you, you know, wouldn't have dared say anything about it, would you? You wouldn't I, have spoke to her? You know what? I knew better way before then, but, boy, that just confirmed it that day. Uh, wow. So uh, who leads this? Brian, you get to lead this one. Talk about the risks of writing controversial posts. I mean, this is really easy, but, you know, give some talk about it a little bit. I I pretty much covered this on the on the last topic. I jumped ahead without realizing it, but yeah, I mean, there's a risk. There's a risk about alienating a percentage. You know, like you were just talking about the the mommy bloggers or the wham bloggers. They're talking about their topics, but I mean, it, it's almost like a personal blog for moms or ladies or what have you. And so they're kind of everything opens up. So the tighter, in other words, the tighter your niche gets, the less of an opportunity you have to go off topic. So if you have a personal blog or <coughs> something like that, you can always move off topic. But if you got something that's really focused on a, on a tight niche, 
you always run a danger of both for SEO and alienating your your readership. So you have to be careful. Everybody's passionate about something. The, the trouble is everyone's not passionate about the same things. Everybody has a different point of view. So you might want to talk about politics or religion or any of these other things that my mother always told me never discuss, which is why I always have probably. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Uh, just a, there is a danger to it. I mean, it's just you have to know your readership and know your boundaries. And and I don't mean that to say that people should be limited on their speech or what have you. I'm I'm a big huge believer in free speech. It's just a time and a place, you know. If if you want to uh, move away from that topic, like Cheryl mentioned earlier, there's forums. Um, go to Facebook on your personal you know account or go and tweet your brains off. You know, just just wherever you want there's a there's a ton or go to us other blogs on that topic and and read and comment on theirs that's probably better for you in the long run on that note I will I also want to say it's a little off topic I don't know why I'm bringing it off topic on the off topic discussion but <laughs> I've also started using leaving uh, a link to or removing or not using a link to hot blog tips when I'm off topic where I'm reading an off-topic blog. So, in other words, if I go to a post on, you know, something has nothing to do with business, online business, blogging, internet marketing, social media, anything like that, and it's just something that I find interesting, I want to say my speak my mind. I've been using BrianDHawkins.com as the link rather than Hot Blog Tips, just because the recent changes on Google. I thought I'd throw that out. So, if you're going to get, be on the other end of that off-topic conversation, you might want to just change the URL. If you don't have another blog, like a personal type of link, you could throw in your Twitter URL or your Facebook page or something that's not going to come back and bite you in the butt later with a, with a link that you want to use that disinvolve tool or whatever. So. <laughs> I didn't even know you had that page, and I just went to look over there and... The blogging superhero by day, internet supervillain by night. Where do you see the? Where do you see your post? There's no post. It's not a blog. Jiminy, didn't you just say? Never mind. No, I <laughs> no, I didn't. Go back and watch the recording. <laughs> Carol, didn't he say when he wants to have something to say, then he writes it on BrianDHawkins.com? Or did I not hear that? No, he links to it. But it's not a blog. Oh, good. I mean, Facebook or Twitter is not a blog, but you can leave your link when you comment. So. You're not going to get any comment love if you happen to be on those type of blogs, but you can leave a link. Yeah. I'm just looking at you. Okay. Uh, Cheryl. Okay. <laughs> what are the risks of writing controversial posts? You just have to face it. Somebody's going to love you. Somebody's going to hate you. And then there's a lot of people that just don't freaking care. And a lot of times I go to a controversial post and if it is on a personal blog I say okay it's their personal ideas you face the risk of me saying you know what I don't want to deal with you because your ideas are are maybe something I totally disagree with or I could say oh my god I love this person they're so smart because I agree with them so therefore they're a great person so if you're someone that constantly writes controversial posts and you look for everything to whine, piss, moan, bitch about that ever comes up in the world, then there's a good chance I'm, I'm just going to leave and never come back and not follow you because it seems like you just want to grump about everything. But like I said, you're taking a risk by people either loving you or hating you and you have to make the decision, is it worth it to me to post this and take that chance? I, I want to I wanna, uh, add something to that, just on the opposite, because when somebody's commenting on a blog, it just rubs me the wrong way when everybody's too agreeable. When they go and it's, it's, it's spammy, you know, it's like, you have a fantastic blog, you're, you're a genius, you know, they should put you in the Blogger Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. Note to self, start the Bloggers Hall of Fame. That's a great idea. <laughs> but, uh, 
you know, so there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. I don't want people to misunderstand. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing on a blog or a forum. Just be yourself, speak your mind, be honest. That's all. But but the person that wrote it and controls the site has to be has to give permission to disagree. You go to a lot of posts, they write a controversial post, and then if you disagree with them, even if you're being rational or backing up why you disagree, they either won't post it or they, you know, they delete it or they immediately start in on you. And everybody else com that's commenting starts in on you for having a difference of opinion and that that's where depending on the readers is going to play a big role in what the risk is because if you have readers that are rational and willing to debate and back up with fact and not just get into the name calling and the screaming and the crap like that like I said those can be very educational and if you have that type of reader and and the post is written in such a way that it attracts those type of comments then you might be good to go either way you go but if you're just gonna go one-sided and stick with this and demand that everybody else does it then yeah you're gonna run the risk of people not liking you and and I'll step in on this one because you're absolutely right Cheryl if you're if you're going to take a shot at being controversial or saying something controversial you have to be strong enough to back up your position when you do get those people who disagree with you now I don't go totally controversial on any of my blogs it's, it's you know not necessarily my style but every once in a while I do and I preface it by saying if you disagree with me go ahead and say something but you better keep the proper decorum I'm, I'm very strict with that no bad language no attacking otherwise it, it gets deleted and you can uh, say that it's because I didn't like your position no I didn't like how you said it um, I, I you know I don't accept trolls it's my space I'm paying for the thing I have a certain decorum I've always had the same thing for, for four years geez how long have I had this blog almost five years now I just thought about that I'm just sharing with me five years old come December and for all those years you know I've touched on a lot of topics and some of them are quite controversial not the most of them, but some of them are. But, you know, it's the same thing just as an extension. Let's talk about Twitter. In 2008, I dropped a lot of people uh, on Twitter when they were going against the candidate who, at the time, I hadn't even necessarily decided that was who I really wanted. You know, I mean, I pretty much figured I was probably going to vote, but I really didn't have, um, um, like, a true stake in it at the time because I was actually pulling for someone else. The thing is, when I saw certain comments that I thought were way beyond political, they were personal, they were racist, they were a lot of other stuff, it's like, oh no, you know what, I don't need to know that person at all. And some of those people were big name people, you know, in, in internet marketing and whatever. I could have cared less because there's, there's ways that you show that you're against someone or for someone and there's ways that you don't especially if you're hoping to do any business whatsoever. And so I dropped a ton of those people. And I dropped some people this year for exactly the same thing. You know, you can be for or against something, but it's how you decide to deliver it. And if you're in business and you decide to go that far with it, then you open yourself up to wondering later on, well, geez, you know, I, I don't get to have an opinion. Well, yeah, you got to have an opinion. Are you ready for the consequences of what your opinion is? And that's really one of those things you always talk about. If you're ready for the potential consequences of going way off, then go ahead, do it. You know, that's what free speech says. If you're ready for the consequences, go ahead and do it. And, you know, that's just my point on it. So let's get to question number five. It's the final question. Whether you support it or not, what would you recommend people make sure they do or don't do if they decide to go controversial? Cheryl, you get to begin. Oh, Joy. Well, <laughs> if, if your post is emotionally driven, where, where it's something personal to you, not just something you're grumpy about or technical, then I suggest you write it on a document. You set it aside for a few hours, a day, a week, a few months, uh, however long it takes you so that you can read it and take some of the emotion out of it and then post it. That way 
you're not posting up something that that is so emotionally driven at that moment that in a few days you're going oh crap I wish I hadn't said it this way because when you're emotional you're gonna put it right out there point blank uh, if your post is fact-based then I suggest you have as much as you can to back it up be it links to other sites uh, whether it's your life experience if if you have facts have them ready because you're gonna have to at some point possibly pull them out to show why and if all you're gonna say is this is just how I feel this is just how I feel well, well then okay you should have said that to start with and nobody needed to read it because it's just something you feel and we don't need to debate it uh, and then I had on my list the if you're not willing to hear other points of view put that right out there at the beginning I only want attaboys and yes ma'am I don't want to hear anybody else's put it out there and say it if you're willing to take debate comments like Mitch said say on there you know you can you can disagree let's be grown-ups let's not be nasty name-calling you know don't don't allow people to run you over so put out there what you're willing to accept and not accept especially if you you know it's a controversial post if it's a post you just wrote and somebody comes along and and reads into it like the example Mitch gave earlier with the Ann Coulter example then you may not have even known you were you're setting yourself up for this and then you're just gonna maybe have to go in and edit or start working around it but you definitely have to be ready to take the heat and the best way to defend that is to have facts to back it up so that's basically my ideas of do's and don'ts before you ever hit that update button and post great stuff that one deserved that, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom and my dad and God. I didn't even know that existed. Brian, your turn. I I gotta say, Cheryl, you outdid yourself. I ditto ditto ditto. <laughs> I mean, honestly. I can i where were you when I was posting on that's right I said <laughs> I'm sick of dot com. You know what, where I was, I was there agging you on. Come yes, on, Brian, you say it, say it. <laughs> you were at two o'clock in the morning. Go get them, go get them. I wake up in the morning like, oh my God, why did I get on there? You know, you get a good night's sleep and you're like, wow, I look like a raving maniac. You know, because you really do. I mean, you're tired, you know, you just read something that gets you outraged and you go on there and you start typing away and you hit upload. You're like, oh man, I didn't even put an image up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I gotta, re I gotta get my say. You, you mean like, like that thousand word comment you wrote on that one guy's blog? <laughs> oh, you know what? Speaking of, oh, did, did, or yesterday? Oh, no, yeah. a few weeks ago. Okay, because I um, I sent you a link a couple of days ago or yesterday, I think, to a post, and this brings up where I wanted to kind of follow up on. If you're, if you do have a blog, and your topic might be a little more conf uh, uh, conver controversial controversial and <laughs> I have a hard time with that word and if you if you have a, a post it or a blog and on them post do your due diligence stay on top of your game and moderate those like Cheryl was saying there's a lot of a lot of bloggers that just don't want any debate whatsoever they want praise so I posted on a blog yesterday Probably well, well over 24 hours ago, and it's still in moderation. So I'm, I'm wondering, it's still not showing on the blog. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I disagreed with the guy. I thought it was respectful. I didn't go on the attack. I'm completely against attacking other people on their own property. Don't do that. But uh, I was very respectful, and here it is, well over 24 hours, and I'm wondering, did it get? you know sent to I knew I got sent to spam because it was in moderation well it was my first time on their blog so I expected that but is it ever going to see the light of day so it's got me wondering so the point is if you the probably the more controversial your topic go ahead and 
stay on your game and, and moderate as quick as you can so that you don't have people sitting there. And, and also, I really like Cheryl's point, do your research. I've done that before. You know, and we see this all the time on Facebook. All these urban legends and, you know, all these things be, uh, are posted and shared and reshared all over the place. And then you go and look at uh, urbanlegends.com or uh, snoops.com and find out, wow, it's, it's just a scam or it's just not true. Yet you have everybody, including half of my family, sharing it on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> and then I'm sending them notes. Do your research. Don't just spread this garbage all over the place. Well, a lot of bloggers tend to do that too. Yeah, how many I times have we heard about all the planets are aligned and on such and such a date and it'll be the last time it happens and we're going to have tidal waves and earthquakes and the world is going to explode. It's like, my God, that thing comes out at least once every three months, people. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, isn't the, isn't the end of the Earth supposed to happen again this month? Or is yeah, that in December. In December. Oh, next month. So we got a month to live. So yeah. oh, I know what it is, Brian, is you have a month to send me all of your worldly goods, and <laughs> I will watch for them as you are taken up into the rapture or the spaceship or whatever happens, I will be the guardian of them. There you so go. go ahead. Well, you're going to be... Uh, Sorely disappointed because all my words is gifts fit in a small envelope. Can I have Sadie? No, Sadie's not mine. She's her own person. Uh. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, go ahead. Let go ahead. Mitch answer. Yeah. Yeah. Let Mitch. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, you know, basically, you know what, Cheryl, you pretty much covered it all. I will add just this little bit, which basically says that. If you decide to go that route, be prepared for what can come. And even if you don't decide to go that route, if you decide to write about something that doesn't necessarily personally affect you, but you write about it, just be prepared because someone may take it differently than you. As I mentioned earlier, you know, I wrote that, that one post about uh, seeing these girls at the state fair wearing this stuff that was just amazing, and they're with their parents. And the next thing you know, I'm hearing from parents on the blog post complaining that I don't know how hard it is for their kids. And I'm thinking, yeah, back in our day, our parents didn't worry about how hard it was for their kids. They made their kids dress a certain way. So, you know, I, I have little sympathy for that. But I, you know, saw the, you know, the thing that parents came out. I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't think, you know, that was coming. Uh, but, you know what, I stuck by my guns on it. And you have to be ready to do that. And, of course, I'm going to take this one other thing, and I'm going to say that there are times where if you're representing your business, you need to remember that and separate your personal feeling from your business because that stuff will come back on you. If you think, I'm just going to use this as an example, if you're against President Obama and your argument is he must be a Muslim and I don't like Muslims, so therefore I'm not going to do that, but your business is marketing and sales, I'm sorry, you're a moron. You just killed your market. What business wants to work with you unless they happen to be radical something against Muslims? Who wants you representing them? And you don't get to say, well, that's my personal opinion. I treat everyone the same. No, you, you don't get that opportunity again. So if you're representing a business in any way, shape, or form, you really have to watch out what you're going to say and what you're willing to stick by. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm going to say that people should not be scared to present an opinion. They just need to watch out how they word it so that they don't totally alienate others or don't get the trolls coming in, you know, writing all that anonymous stuff that hopefully you're going to block anyway. Um, you know, you got a long way to go, and I doubt there's very many people who want to live in social media being thought of as a blankety blank. See, I don't cuss, so that's my word. <laughs> so there you well, go. if you if you ever come across a, a time where you need a cuss word, just let me know. I'll cuss for you because I'm fully prepared to handle that. You know, I'm thinking about recording a bunch of bunch of you your words you cussing, and then every time I need one, just put on the tape, and there's the word. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That way you don't have to say it. I can handle it for you. There you go. 
So anyway, that's our topic today. Uh, you know, I hope that you have gained some kind of insight on our thoughts on it. Uh, I'm Mitch Mitchell of I'm Just Sharing. Cheryl, do you have a final thought or are you done? My final thought is I'm always willing to debate. So you put up what you want and if I got the urge, I'll come debate with you. But I'm right. <laughs> Brian, final thought? <laughs> there it is. I like that final thought. <laughs> and then, well, there you go, folks. Have a great day. Have a great Sunday. And if you're informed, please go out and vote on Tuesday. Take care. Bye. <laughs>